The Earth is inhabited by millions of different life forms. From the tiniest bacteria to the largest whales, the extraordinary diversity of life fills every habitat. Scientists estimate that there are well over 10 million species living on the planet today. But less than two million of these have been discovered so far. From the very beginning of life, all organisms have been connected through common ancestors in a single history of descent, the Great Tree of Life. So the Tree of Life is, to me, one of the most amazing concepts that humans have ever uh, come up with. Uh, the tree is a set of genetic connections. It's, uh, it's a description of the relatedness of all organisms. This tree is over three and a half billion years old, and to think that all living creatures are but leaves on the tips of this tree and deeply interconnected through their genes is, to me, just an astounding concept. Today, Scientists are embarked on a great new age of discovery, charting all of the branches of the Tree of Life. This was a real species that existed. To discover the shape of the Tree of Life, teams of scientists around the globe are gathering data in the field and in the laboratory to reconstruct the genealogical relationships that link all life forms, past and present. Utilizing new methods and cutting edge technologies, scientists are meeting the enormous challenge of discovering the millions of branches that make up the tree of life. Many groups of organisms have a very complex ancestry. And we're trying to record events that happened very fast a long time ago. And that's very, very challenging. In his book, The Origin of Species, published in 1859, biologist Charles Darwin compared life on the planet to a great tree. Darwin realized that the process of evolution implied shared ancestry, going all the way back to the beginning of life. Ever since Darwin, scientists have attempted to reconstruct the historical relationships among species. Today, evolutionary biologists refer to the tree of life as a phylogeny. Phylogeny is a history. It's a history of branching within a lineage, within a group of species. How does this branching occur? Imagine a population of bunnies continually reproducing, giving rise to one generation after another. At some point, a river changes its course, creating two separate bunny populations and preventing them from reproducing with one another. Later, in one of these populations, a baby pops up with a mutation, a new feature represented here by the color purple. It turns out that purple bunnies are increasingly successful in this environment, and soon the entire population on that side of the river is made up of purple bunnies. Sometime later, Imagine that this population of purple bunnies is split in two again, in this case by the appearance of a volcano. In one of the now separated populations, a new mutation results in a red-colored bunny. Red-colored bunnies do well in that environment, and eventually, all bunnies on that side of the volcano are colored red. This process of successive splitting generates a branching pattern, a tree, along which we can trace the evolution of new characteristics, in this case, from tan to purple, and later, from purple to red. The search for the underlying branching pattern of the tree of life typically begins with the study of the visible characteristics of organisms. 
to aid in their research. Evolutionary biologists, increasingly, also make use of a whole new data set. Genetic material itself, sequences of DNA molecules found inside of each cell. By comparing the DNA sequences of different species, evolutionary biologists are able to reconstruct the tree of life with increasing confidence. While these new data have shed light on the tree, the increasing size of phylogenetic data sets has also highlighted just how difficult this problem is. So the, the problem for the tree of life is that it's really immense. There are known to be something like 1.8 million species on Earth alive today. But all of us think that the number is actually much larger than that. When we get around to discovering it all, it will be more like 10 million or more than 10 million species. So when we're trying to reconstruct any portion of the tree of life, it's a process of elimination. We examine all the possible hypotheses of how these species could be related to one another. To do that rigorously, you'd have to look at all the possible trees, all the possible ways these species could be related to one another. For three species, there are just three trees. For four species, there's 15 possible arrangements. For five species, there's 105. But by the time we get to 10 species, it's getting up to 34 million. 34 million is still doable, but when you get to 50 species, it's an immense number. There are so many possible solutions that we can't possibly examine all of them individually. So even for just a tree of, of 50 species, there are more possible ways of building a tree than there are atoms in the entire universe. Sample this solution. What's needed are shortcuts that so solution, that biologists but... don't have to examine every single possible tree. Computer scientists are actively exploring methods to reconstruct phylogenetic relationships and have successfully developed a variety of new, highly efficient approaches to the problem. It took 10 years of developing techniques and experimenting with them and trying new techniques and just continuing with lots of real data sets and simulated data sets and then coming across the ideas that actually led us to come up with these breakthroughs. The development of new theory and mathematical methods, the availability of massive amounts of DNA data, and ever more powerful computers have combined to fuel unprecedented advances in our understanding of the tree of life. Many surprises have emerged from the phylogenetic analysis of molecular information. One of the most unexpected recent findings concerns an unusual parasitic flowering plant called Rafflesia. They're found in Southeast Asia, and they uh, produce the world's largest flowers. The biggest of them is like three feet in diameter, weighs more than 20 pounds, and looks and smells like uh, rotting flesh. Early on, people thought, wow, this is not even a flowering plant, it's a, it's a fungus. But very quickly, they realized that, it, no, indeed, it's a flowering plant. And what we're now increasingly finding out is that groups of organisms like the Rafflesiaceae, we've, in the past, tended to kind of cluster them together. We're now finding out that they represent many independent branches in, in the tree of life. Their closest relatives are not things with large flowers, but instead, they're actually things with really tiny, millimeter-sized flowers. Knowledge of the tree of life is changing the way we look at the diversity of life on Earth. I think what's great about the tree of life is that it is reorienting the way we think about almost everything in biology. We will have gone from essentially no knowledge of the tree of life, or just very vague knowledge, to a very complete knowledge of all the major branches and how they're related to one another. Our understanding of the evolution of the Earth's biodiversity and the relationships of all life forms to one another is increasing rapidly through this monumental scientific undertaking. The study of the tree of life is also yielding insights of enormous practical importance, including life-saving applications.
Ultimately, the Tree of Life provides a much deeper comprehension of each and every organism's place on Earth, including our own.